All right, welcome to the problem solving section. Now, how does problem solving work in the IMAT? Well, similarly to critical thinking, problem solving isn't its own section officially. It's just a subsection of the logical reasoning section, and that is made up of 10 questions, of which problem solving composes five of them. Now, technically, the IMAT doesn't promise that the problem solving section will be composed of five questions, but it has been the case ever since 2019 when they switched the format. So you can be pretty sure that problem solving will be worth seven and a half marks. OK, so what is it that you need to study for problem solving? Well, really, you don't need much assumed knowledge at all. You just need some basic mathematics. And by that, I mean things like basic arithmetic, basic algebra and some very basic geometry. Like think area of a rectangle or area of a square or best area of a triangle type geometry. This is stuff that pretty much everyone knows at a high school level anyway. So there is really nothing that you need to study. However, you do need to practice these things. It might seem very trivial to practice basic arithmetic, but most of us in high school, we get used to using calculators. And in the IMAT, you don't have a calculator. So you need to get good at practicing your mental maths. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this section because I cover that in the mathematics section. So look at that section if you want some help regarding mathematics. Now, obviously, problem solving isn't just maths. There's a lot of other things that you have to be good at as well. And unfortunately, problem solving is not like critical thinking in the sense that you can just learn a method, apply it every time and get the question right. That's not how it works. These questions can vary quite a bit and they often tend to do so. Now, officially, the IMAT breaks problem solving into three question types. One is called relevant selection, the other is called finding procedures, and the last one is called identifying similarity. Now that might not seem like a lot, but really I don't find this categorization helpful because the variety of the types of questions they can ask you in problem solving is massive. So really the only way to get good at this is through practice. Now there are some types of problem solving questions which do repeat, that is they're ones that you actually can prepare for and if you're lucky enough to get them in the actual IMAT test that you sit, well, then you will be able to get the mark quite quickly. So I'm going to focus on those ones in this section and teach you how to do specific types of questions, as well as give you some basic hints on how you can approach a general type of problem solving question. But yeah, unfortunately, there's no method you can just learn and then apply to every question and then get the answer correct every time. That's not how this section works. So really, you have to start practicing if you want to get good at this section. Now, where can you practice? Well, there are questions on IMAT Buddy. And of course, pass IMAT papers. And the BMAT also has some relevant questions. Now, I find the BMAT questions do differ a bit from the IMAT style questions, but some of them are the same. So I would definitely practice the BMAT questions. Now, one piece of final advice. If a question in problem solving looks too difficult to do, or if it looks like it's going to take too much time to do, then skip it. You don't want to be wasting time in the IMAT. You want to be doing the easy questions first, and you want to be actually allocating your time to questions that you can solve. And a lot of these problem solving questions will be overcomplicated or very easy to mess up if you aren't fully concentrated. So really, you have to get used to doing these questions and get an intuition of what questions you can do and which ones you can't. And if you can't do it, don't worry, just skip ahead. You don't need every question right to pass the IMAT.